There was a time, and not so very long ago, when the very mention of complementary or alternative therapies conjured up all manner of strange and mystical images. But today, aromatherapy, reflexology, acupuncture, massage and homeopathy, to mention but a few of the treatments on offer, have become widely accepted by even the most sceptical of people. However, bring up the subject of Reiki and people will rarely even get as far as suspicious because nine times out of ten, they just won't have a clue what Reiki is all about. Undoubtedly, as Reiki becomes more familiar, it will be equally as popular as other complementary therapies that are now so precious for counteracting the stresses of modern day life. And hopefully, after watching this program, you'll be able to experience some of the wonderful healing properties of this remarkable process for yourself. When you visit a reflexologist, aromatherapist or homeopath, although the treatment will be holistic, which simply means treating the person as a whole rather than just targeting specific health issues, there are tangible principles that our Western-bound scientific thinking can readily assimilate. For example, in reflexology, the major organs of the body can be accessed through corresponding mapped zones on the feet. And with aromatherapy, our own ancient traditions have always advocated the use of such plants as chamomile, rose, lavender and rosemary in healthcare. Once a therapist explains the basic techniques at the beginning of the session, usually a maximum of a couple of minutes, the recipient can be treated very successfully without any further acquisition of knowledge on their part. Without doubt, the healthier living the recipient, the better. Cigarettes, alcohol, caffeine and fatty, sugary, high cholesterol foods are best kept to a minimum. But that's true for all of us anyway. Don't worry, you won't get a lecture from your therapist, so do be honest when you're asked questions about health and lifestyle. Now, when it comes to Reiki, all of this is equally as valid as it is with the other therapies, but there's a great deal more involved for those who want to take the principles of Reiki just a few steps further. This is not solely a physical treatment. It incorporates all aspects of spiritual and personal growth as well. Achieving good health is of course paramount on every level, but maintaining the status quo is limiting. Reiki is about moving forwards in life, facing challenges and seizing the moment. Standing still is not an option for self-growth and Reiki constantly prepares us for whatever life might have in store. Although this sounds perfectly logical in theory, most people find they need a little help to put this into practice and it's certainly useful to take a brief look at the origins of Reiki at the outset. Emerging from Japan in the early part of the 20th century, the treatment is based upon an ancient Japanese form of hands-on healing. This immediately brings to mind images of faith healers and religious ceremonies of the laying on of hands, but you do need to put this out of your mind. Reiki may have a spiritual base, but it's not tied to any specific religion. To benefit from Reiki healing, it doesn't make any difference whether the recipient believes in it or not. Faith on the receiver's part is not a prerequisite. Reiki energy pours through the body of the giver through the hands. 
It's perfectly safe and there's no danger of giving too much Reiki because when the receiver has all that is required, the energy flow will stop. If you take a closer look at the Japanese kanji best translated as a pictogram for the word Reiki, you can start to grasp what this is all about. The most popular translation is Universal Life Force, with the top kanji representing the word Rei. The upper line denotes heaven literally raining good things down on the earth. The three boxes in the middle represent prayer and the inverted V's the priests. The lower kanji shows the complete cycle of life energy with the four elements fire, earth, air and water. This is the key part of the word meaning energy or life force to the ray meaning universal. So, we know we're dealing with energy forces and that's what Reiki is predominantly all about. The next question is who can do Reiki and what do you look for in a practitioner? This will seem a bizarre answer, but the truth is we can all do Reiki. Each and every one of us has healing hands, if only we knew how to use them. Meet Anne Tocknell, a very experienced Reiki practitioner who has received what is known as attunement in Reiki. There are many level 1 Reiki classes that you can attend. Just find one in your local area and this would then enable you to perform Reiki on yourself and others. It usually only takes about two days and the most concise explanation is that it will switch on your healing powers. After some months practicing Reiki at level 1, people who want to become professional therapists will go on to level 2, but few will subsequently go on to the level of Reiki Master, because this takes at least a year, and this third stage is far more spiritual and will enable the practitioner to attune others. It's interesting to note that if you do the class for Reiki Stage 1, but then do nothing with it, you'll never lose that attunement. It might take a while to reactivate, but the energy will flow just as strongly when you get it going. Um, I think I've got a while the crux of this is the fact that your Reiki therapist will have started out using Reiki on themselves. A case of physician heal thyself if you like. This can only be good news for anyone considering a Reiki treatment because there is no better way to learn. Before we go to Anne to see Reiki being demonstrated, it's well worth taking a few moments to explore the basic principles of Reiki and how they can be incorporated into everyday life. There's absolutely no need to take a Reiki course to enjoy the benefits of a treatment from a Reiki practitioner, but these thought-provoking ideas are full of nurture, kindness and love, plus the added bonus of being refreshingly down-to-earth and loaded with common sense. First of all, stop worrying. It sounds so simple, but it's something we're all overburdened with. The basic principle with Reiki is to let go. Work out what is causing your anxiety, face the problem head on and let Reiki strengthen your resolve. It's so easy to let things escalate out of all proportion and quite often when you take control of a situation, although it might sound trite, it's never as bad as you feared. In our modern day world, anger is a very destructive emotion and Reiki can definitely help to control it. Look within and work out why you are feeling angry. 
Perhaps you've been unjustly treated, or conversely, maybe you're just not getting your own way. Be honest with yourself and tackle the cause. Don't repress your anger, that's very dangerous. Discuss the problem, argue it out rationally if need be. But again, as with anxiety, you must let it go. Remember, we've been talking about self-growth and personal development, and this is an area where we can gain valuable insights about what makes us tick. Here's a very good principle. Whatever your cultural or religious background, show your gratitude. If someone shows you even the smallest kindness, say thank you. It might only be waving your hand to someone who has let you out into a traffic jam, but this will lift your own spirits and those of the person you have acknowledged as doing you a good deed. On a deeper level, even if you are going through a tough time with Reiki to support you, try and look at it from the point of view of learning from the experience, which you may well find yourself being grateful for sometime in the future. No one, not even a Reiki master, would find this easy, so don't be too hard on yourself if you find this concept difficult to grasp. Reiki is a pathway and we learn as we go along. It's the getting there that's most enlightening, so don't be in too much of a hurry to reach journey's end. Next on the list of self-discovery comes honesty with others and ourselves. Again, it's not always easy to achieve and there will definitely be a few demons for you to face. Dishonesty will make us feel guilty and as with the other principles of Reiki, we must face the problem, deal with it, let it go and move on. If you can't be forgiven by others, you must learn from the experience and forgive yourself. This is about strength of character and fighting for what you believe in rather than simply following the crowd. Last but not least, honour every living thing and try to look beyond everyday trials and tribulations and consider life from a more global perspective. We are all part of the bigger picture and with our own roles to play in the flow of energy from a cosmic point of view. Whatever your spiritual beliefs or your views on alternative therapies and healing, these are very good principles to incorporate into any lifestyle. Don't worry, don't get angry. Be grateful, be honest and honour every living thing. These Reiki doctrines can do you no harm and those around you will without doubt benefit from your improved, calmer, more considerate outlook. This is a very simplified look at the thinking and culture behind Reiki and it's time to join Anne to see her put it all into practice. If you want to find out more about Reiki, there are many wonderful books available on the topic because this programme is a very basic introduction to what is a truly fascinating and life-enriching subject. When you visit a therapist for Reiki, they will begin by asking you some very straightforward questions to build up a picture of your health and lifestyle. It's important to be honest so that you can get the maximum benefit from your healer's skills. 
For the actual Reiki treatment, each practitioner will do things slightly differently, but generally speaking, you can expect to be treated on a couch. If you're trying this out at home on a loved one, an ordinary bed will do just as well with plenty of pillows for support. Also, if you prefer, an ordinary chair will work very well, particularly for access to the chakras in the top half of the body. Creating an atmosphere conducive to healing is very important indeed for both the giver and the receiver of Reiki. Peaceful music can be very relaxing and aromatherapy candles and burners or incense sticks have wonderful tranquil properties. However, you do need to be aware of just how sensitive Reiki will make you and some people find such sensory stimulation distracting. If you go to a professional therapist, they will usually ask you what you would like during the consultation. There are a wide range of aromatherapy oils and candles available, and just the very act of preparing the space for Reiki in this thoughtful, reflective way will most definitely enhance the session. As well as the better known aromas like lavender, chamomile, rose and lemon with their very distinctive characteristics, there are other less obvious essential oils. Why not try juniper if the person receiving the Reiki is suffering from rheumatism or aching joints and patchouli is a highly prized ingredient in Chinese and Japanese medicine, so it makes good sense to incorporate this essential oil into this intrinsically Japanese therapy. Having completed her consultation with her client, Anne is now ready to begin the Reiki treatment. It's worth pointing out here that not every person who comes to a therapist will be given Reiki as there are occasions where it isn't the best option, in which case a creditable practitioner will advise accordingly and point the person in the direction of a more suitable therapy. However, this is pretty rare and for the majority of people it's an ideal way of strengthening both the body and the soul. <laughs> for most of us, the prospect of going for a full body massage can be a little daunting, particularly if we're not terribly comfortable about undressing and revealing our lumps and bumps and squidgy bits to a perfect stranger. Panic not, Reiki is performed fully clothed, which does make it very user friendly. Reiki is an energy force and Anne is actually calling that power as she makes the symbols on her hands that she has been given in her attunement with a Reiki master. She is grounding herself so that the healing energy can pass through her to her client. If you go for a Reiki treatment, you probably won't even notice your practitioner doing this as hopefully you'll be so comfortable and relaxed, you'll already be shutting out all that is going on around you. is starting at the head where the crown chakra will respond to her energy. Now this is where you might not be sure what to expect if you don't know anything about Reiki. Once Anne has got her hands into position she will stay still and concentrate her healing energy through to her recipient. This can be for up to three minutes, but anyone who is only just beginning with Reiki, having reached level one attunement, will need to do this for five minutes in each position. The reason for this is the fact that with practice and deeper awareness, the Reiki actually becomes stronger and takes less time to be effective.
As the receiver of Reiki at this stage, it's important to let yourself be as relaxed as possible. If this is difficult and it seems impossible to clear your mind of distractions, focus on the four elements of the Reiki Kanji, earth, fire, water and air. You are at one with the universe and the healing energy can wash over you like the waves on the shore. While the crown chakra is being worked on, receive the force of Reiki as the ebb and flow of the tide. The head is obviously the control centre for the whole body with the different areas of the brain and stimulating balanced function in this way will improve everything from memory to coordination. Also, this is where the heart of the glandular system lies, designed to keep the body clear of infection. So our waves analogy, washing the shoreline clean, day in, day out, is most appropriate, as the power of Reiki strengthens natural immunity and helps the body to fight infection. By the time Anne's three minutes are up, the recipient will feel a warm, tingling sensation where Anne's hands have been resting. This is a very gentle treatment and some practitioners don't actually make physical contact with their client, preferring to give Reiki from just a few inches above the different positions. Next, Anne moves her hands over her recipient's face and this is an area that needs to be approached with great care. If you are going to make physical contact, it must be firm enough not to tickle, but gentle enough not to cause discomfort. The face, particularly the eye area, is very sensitive indeed, so bear this in mind. And whatever happens, make sure that you don't put any pressure on the nose. It's also worth mentioning that you don't want your hands smelling of anything untoward. Yesterday's onion peeling or cigarette smells can be very off-putting for this position, so go for gentle soap and an unfragranced hand cream to make the experience as pleasant as possible. With the eyes covered, the receiver should relax very quickly and the analogy of a flickering fire can be very warming and comforting at this point. Try and drift off. Imagine flickering flames and glowing embers as the Reiki practitioner pours healing energy into the face. This is a very effective position for easing headaches, sinus pain and eye strain and is worth remembering as you can actually do this for yourself, whether sat at your desk at work or relaxing watching television in the evening. As well as helping with the more obvious headaches, the area of the frontal brain being covered contains some very important glands, including the all-controlling pituitary, and a good blast of Reiki can only be of benefit. Restoring equilibrium to the pituitary can really help with one of the most problematic glands in our modern evolution. The adrenal glands just above the kidneys produce the hormone adrenaline, a major factor when it comes to dealing with stress, and this is all regulated in part from the pituitary. Adrenaline is often nicknamed the fright, flight and fight hormone, and it had a vital role to play for our hunter-gatherer ancestors when they found themselves being pursued by fierce wild animals that perceived them as dinner. In physiological terms, the release of adrenaline pumps blood away from non-vital areas such as the skin and delivers it to the limbs to aid either a speedy getaway or a stand-up fight. Incidentally, this is why people who've had a fright turn very pale. This was absolutely fine for our rough and ready antecedents, but unfortunately we have the same physical response whenever we're aggravated, frightened or stressed. 
Road rage is sadly all too common today, and this is a classic example of an inappropriate adrenaline response. Another driver cuts into the lane we are travelling in, and whoosh, off goes the adrenaline. In fact, enough to see off a whole herd of elephants. In the past, our ancestors would have either run like the wind or fought for their lives, in which case the adrenaline would have been efficiently dispersed and removed from the bloodstream. So what do we do? Sit in our cars and sound the horn. Hardly sufficient activity to deal with the fast flowing adrenaline and in some cases this boils over into road rage, resulting on occasion in tragic consequences. Reiki is wonderful for helping us cope with stress and manage anger. And as we discussed earlier in the principles of Reiki, anger is something we must control in our quest for inner peace. Whether you are giving or receiving Reiki, focus on the strength to stay calm and resist becoming angry when life sorely tries us. As Anne moves gently to cover her recipient's ears and jaw, it isn't because the noise levels in the room have suddenly risen. This almost cupping of the ears is quite strange for the receiver at first and the effect can be similar to that of holding a seashell over your ear as a child playing on the beach would do. Go with the flow of this, particularly if this positioning of the hands feels a little claustrophobic and visualise the waves breaking on the beach again so that you really enjoy the tranquility of the gift of Reiki. The actual ear area will benefit greatly with hearing and balance strengthened and for anyone suffering with toothache or mouth ulcers this will feel wonderfully soothing. Also, this combined with throat chakra position can be terrific for a sore throat if you don't have time for a full treatment. But more of that in a few minutes. Holding the back of the head is one of the most relaxing positions in Reiki. The gentle cradling of the skull with the fingertips reaching down an inch or so onto the neck. It's really important for the thumbs to actually touch and stay in contact throughout for this to be effective. The energy flow will be pretty powerful and as the receiver relaxes into the moment, tranquil images will again be helpful. It may be that by this stage complete relaxation will have been achieved, in which case the receiver's mind could already be clear of all thoughts, allowing the Reiki to have maximum input. From an anatomical point of view, this hand position is directly accessing the cerebral cortex, cerebellum, brainstem and parts of the glandular system. If a Reiki practitioner is helping someone who has suffered a head injury or a stroke, this will really give the brain functions a boost and for nervous or emotionally based complaints, this is perhaps one of the most calming hand positions of the entire treatment. With the head certainly well covered, it's now time to move on to the neck and throat area, which in Reiki is very important indeed. It's also an extremely sensitive area, and if you're trying this out on a loved one, please be very careful as you could undo all the good work you've already put into the head. Try to avoid brushing the face with sleeves or hands as you get into position and also be very careful not to trap any hair. The transition between hand positions needs to be as smooth as possible so as not to break the energy flow. Even one or two trapped hairs will bring the recipient sharply out of their relaxed state which will make work on the throat chakra all the harder. 
The reason the throat is so important is because it is the centre of communication. On a purely physical level, sore throats and stiff necks will respond well to this hand position. But open your mind further and you'll soon see the possibilities. How many times a day do you find yourself metaphorically biting your tongue? It's unfortunately a curse of modern life and all the pent-up emotion and frustration that this causes can really block the energy flow through the body. Also, people who lack self-confidence and struggle to express themselves to others suffer the same difficulties, but Reiki can be really helpful with both scenarios. Because this is a treatment that encourages the gentle elimination of stress and tension whilst boosting clear energy pathways and consequently fuels self-esteem, Reiki can help facilitate effective communication on every level. Also, it's important to remember that the very significant thyroid gland is located within the throat responsible for producing the hormone thyroxine, which regulates growth and metabolism, this is key to balanced health. Too much thyroxine and the person will become hyperactive with weight loss and too much will have the opposite effect, producing lethargy and weight gain. Now, it's really important to stress that a Reiki practitioner will never diagnose such conditions and conventional medical treatment is vital. But where this wonderful side effect free therapy can help is in boosting the general energy in the region of the thyroid. For Anne, as she pours energy into her recipient's throat chakra, she is transmitting balance and harmony, which will naturally help anybody who has thyroid problems, but can do nothing but good for promoting health and well-being in the rest of us as well. Moving on down to the chest area, the major chakra will be the heart. Many people will expect their therapist to concentrate on the left-hand side over the heart itself, but the chakra is actually located in the centre of the chest. It's important to point out here that although a whole Reiki treatment will access all the chakras, they do not work independently of each other. A problem with blocked energy flow will inevitably have a knock-on effect and ultimately will spiral to the heart and head chakras, resulting in stress and tension. In physical terms, the heart is of course hugely important, controlling the circulation and is the most fundamental and powerful energy source within the human body. However, on an emotional level within Reiki, it's also the seat of love. And thinking back to the principles of this therapy, this is all important. Healing is born out of love and respect for all life forces. And this pouring out of spirituality from the giver of Reiki to the receiver is what makes it so unique. The area below the chest, which Anne has moved on to, is quite literally a nerve centre for the whole body, especially where the solar plexus chakra, located here, is concerned. With the lungs, liver, spleen, pancreas, gallbladder and a network of major blood vessels all packed into this concentrated area, there's an awful lot going on particular focus on this area in Reiki can be very helpful if the receiver has suffered a recent shock or is a diabetic. Insulin production or lack of it is the province of the pancreas so getting the energy flowing as effectively as possible in this region is very valuable indeed. By the time Anne reaches the abdomen, the recipient is perfectly relaxed, but there is still a lot of work to be done here. 
The digestion of food and the absorption of nutrients are paramount and it's worth mentioning here another scourge of modern life. Thrush is a condition that for reasons of embarrassment is not discussed a great deal. This fungal infection is caused by candida, which in normal circumstances exists quite harmlessly within the intestines. Unfortunately, if the balance is upset, most commonly due to yeast intolerance or the use of antibiotics, the result in thrush can be a miserable consequence. Although there are more over-the-counter remedies available from your pharmacist than ever before, prevention is still better than cure. If this is a problem you suffer with, your Reiki therapist can really concentrate healing energy over the intestines and it's also worth taking a close look at your own diet. A good health food shop will have lots of pure alternatives to our highly additive filled convenience foods which can make this problem worse and of course if you can manage to keep your yeast intake to a minimum this can be helpful too. Moving on down to the lower abdomen and reproductive organs, Reiki can have a significant effect on a number of very common disorders. Irritable bowel syndrome or colitis can definitely be improved by Reiki in this area and of course for females, menstrual problems can be eased dramatically by a well-targeted dose of Reiki. If all this talk of thrush and menstrual problems as well as the positioning of Anne's hands for this Reiki point proves a little off-putting for the male of the species, worry not. For men, the hands are usually held an inch or two above the body at this point and bearing in mind the high incidence of prostate difficulties for older males, Reiki can be very useful indeed. Also, for males and females, this region is vital in the removal of body waste. If this function is inhibited in any way, toxic buildup can be most unpleasant and certainly will not be conducive to good health. At the end of your Reiki session, your therapist will advise you to drink plenty of water to help flush the toxins through that will have been removed from tense muscles during the treatment. When working on the legs, Reiki is usually given on the front of the body and Anne will steadily move down in gradual stages to the feet. If you do need to pinpoint a specific joint, perhaps your receiver is encountering pain in the knees, you can concentrate your efforts very specifically. However, there is just one proviso here that's true for the whole body. Don't use Reiki on broken bones. You must wait until the fracture has healed before calling on Reiki. Other injuries, particularly sports related, will usually respond very well to Reiki and naturally all the reactivated flow in energy will give that extra boost to any physical activity. Having completed the Reiki treatment for the front of the body, Anne has now got her recipient to turn over so that she can work on the back. This gives her the perfect opportunity to really focus on the shoulders where most of us carry a phenomenal amount of tension around with us every day. Reiki can do a fine job of dispersing stress and of course with all the work that Anne has already done she can be very effective indeed.
Working down the back, Anne is able to reinforce the Reiki she has given on the front of the body. At the top of the back, the lungs, ribs and the heart can all receive that vital top-up of healing energy. This is actually wonderful for anyone suffering with breathing difficulties and that can mean anything from the congestion of a common cold to asthma. When it comes to the middle area at the waist, it's just as busy at the back as it was at the front with the spleen, liver, gallbladder and pancreas all receiving an additional boost. We talked about the adrenal glands and adrenaline in connection with the pituitary, but this is the area in which the Reiki practitioner can really target the kidneys and the adrenal glands. Although adrenaline out of balance is most commonly associated with stress and tension, when working in this region, Reiki can also give great relief for sufferers of arthritis. The lumbar region at the top of the buttocks is an area that accumulates tension almost as regularly as the shoulders. Reiki can ease both general stiffness and sciatica dramatically and this positioning of the hands can be of great benefit for intestinal problems. On reaching the base of the spine, Anne uses a T position a few inches above the coccyx. Again, this will reinforce the healing energy given to the lumbar region with added emphasis on the reproductive and urinary systems. It will also come as no surprise that this Reiki position is an absolute godsend for anyone suffering with hemorrhoids. What's more, this is one you can do for yourself in a sitting position, leaning slightly forward, so it's worth remembering in case of emergency. However, regular users of Reiki will probably find that their bodily functions are so much more efficient as a result, the likelihood of such an uncomfortable affliction would certainly be minimised. To finish the Reiki session, Anne is accessing the small of her recipient's back and the shoulder. This will help to bring her back from the deep state of relaxation the Reiki treatment has induced. Usually after an hour to an hour and a half, the recipient will need a little time before they are ready to go on their way. Despite the fact that Reiki is non-diagnostic, it's perfectly acceptable to ask for healing for areas that might be troubling you. Should your Reiki practitioner advise you that you need to seek further medical advice, do follow this up. You may well find that if a practitioner feels that a client is failing to accept a serious illness, they will refuse to give Reiki until that person has consulted a doctor. Don't be afraid of Reiki for someone who is very sick. 
Sadly, the only thing we can be certain of in life is the fact that we will all die and there is a place for Reiki in helping people as they reach the end of their lives. You will also find that Reiki practitioners who are well experienced at level 2 are able to give distant healing, which can be very useful, especially if a person is too uncomfortable to have a healer in close proximity. The only word of caution should be that for Reiki to work, you might not need the recipient to believe in what you're doing, but you must get their permission for healing, even if it's at a distance. By the time Anne has completed this particular session of Reiki, she has returned to her recipient's feet to finalise the treatment and gently cut the healing ties that have bound them for the duration. If you have Reiki from a professional therapist, they should never rush you to get up and moving, so do take a few moments before departing. It's also quite normal to need to go to the toilet frequently after Reiki as all the toxins are flushed through the system. And if you find yourself being prone to bursting into tears, don't be alarmed. It's simply an emotional form of release. Remember that all important Reiki principle of letting go. As our program on Reiki draws to a close, Anne is going to demonstrate how to do a Reiki treatment for yourself. Obviously, this will be far more effective if you actually go on to take a level one course to become attuned, but the moves are still wonderfully relaxing and beneficial, even if you don't get quite that far. Firstly, it's very important to get into a good, comfortable position with the feet planted very firmly on the ground. Breathing needs to be controlled steadily in through the nose and out through the mouth to help relaxation. Starting at the top, the crown chakra is a great place to get going. If you have a headache, this Reiki move will really offer some relief. Placing the hands over the eyes, resting on the cheekbones, will also be extremely beneficial. This is a very popular Reiki move for use on a day-to-day -day basis. Sat at your desk at work with pressures building all around you is the perfect opportunity to try this out for a little calming relief. Also for sinus congestion, this feels really soothing. Following on in this vein, the covering of the ears will continue the good work if you're blocked up with a head cold or flu. Accessing your own throat chakra for a good blast of Reiki can be very helpful indeed if you are attempting to bite your tongue and not say what you really want to but know you shouldn't. It's difficult to achieve sometimes, but you can call on the forces of Reiki to support you through a crisis moment. Also, remember the principles. Maybe you need to view the issue causing you these difficulties from a different perspective and honestly consider how best to resolve such problems. Doing self-reiki on the heart chakra will be very comforting and warming. Remember, it's not just the pump that keeps you alive, it's also about love. If you're having clashes with loved ones, especially troublesome teenagers, a dose of reiki to the heart chakra after the one to the throat chakra to prevent you voicing too many of your own opinions can get you back on course. Sometimes our children metaphorically kick us the hardest when they need us to love them the most. Try calling on Reiki to get that love flowing. 
if all else seems to be failing you. Reiki to the solar plexus can really help us to catch our breath and can calm frazzled nerves if it's all getting a bit too much for us. Take a quiet moment wherever you are to get back on track, whatever life might have thrown at you. To finish off, just holding your own back in this way for even a few minutes will give great relief for lumbar pain and it's not until you try this that you'll realise how tense and stressed the muscles of this area can become as you go about your daily tasks. Whatever you're facing in your life, whether it be everyday annoyances or major trauma, there is a place for Reiki, if only to help you cope better with what may be asked of you. Think back to the principles of Reiki. Don't worry, don't get angry, be grateful, be honest and honour every living thing and you can't go wrong. Even if you can only manage this for today, it will be enough to help you on your way. And the most wonderful added bonus is the fact that Reiki will radiate outwards to benefit every living thing that you come into contact with.